one of the best things about being a programmer is being able to solve your own problems with code and being able to create your own solutions. So back in 2017, I wanted an easy way to be able to save the snippets of text that I have and be able to easily copy and paste them to different places. So I'm talking about links and hashtags for social media posts, quick responses to people, just anything that I wanted to be able to one click tap and copy and paste somewhere else. So I looked at the options out there. I didn't really see anything that looked and performed the way that I wanted. So I, being a programmer, went ahead and created my own app that you see here on the screen called Snippeta. Snippeta to me is the best way to copy, paste, and manage snippets of text to your clipboard with a single tap and copy with a single tap without long pressing or highlighting or anything like that. You just quickly go get the text you need and use it wherever you need. But I built this app so long ago, now it's starting to be outdated. Other apps starting to catch up with it. It could use some new features, a new overhaul uh, on the tech side and on the feature side and on the UX side. It's a pretty simple app. You load the main screen here and you can click to make a new snippet. You can either take that snippet from your current clipboard or you can create a new snippet just blank or you can create a list. So, you know, if I say create a new snippet, I can give it a title and then I can give it some sort of description and I can choose what color I want the snippet to be and press save and it'll save a new uh, snippet there. Then I can delete it. I can also like reorder these, move to top. I should make this where you're able to kind of drag and maybe move them around a little bit more easier. I can edit the snippet. I can have list of snippets. So I click on this one, you have a new list. So I can have like sub list of snippets uh, and I can go in and edit them. But it's pretty, I mean, as simple as that. You can go here. There is like a uh, pro mode that you can click on to give you more snippets. Right now, I think you can do up to 10 snippets on a page, but you can do infinitely as many lists and sub snippets as you want. Uh, and that's $1 to get a lifetime access to the pro features which that's another thing I wanna change about the app because I think it's too cheap. So I haven't really made a lot of money because it's just over the course of six years, if only 600 people did it, that's only $600 over the course of you know six, seven years, which isn't that much money. So I wanna kinda add more features, add more value so that I can charge more and feel good about it. Uh, but yeah, the app is pretty simple. I think it still looks pretty sleek. Uh, I do wanna update, make the text bigger. That was one piece of feedback I got online. And I also just want to replatform this whole app. So uh, basically the tech behind it, how I built it. I do want to like build it in a newer technology that's easier for me to manage so that I'll want to update it more. What happened is I didn't update it in the last six or seven years. And so now it's kind of got caught up by other apps and it's just, you know, lagging behind in a lot of features that iOS and Android have implemented in uh, recent times. I built this app using Xamarin cross-platform framework that allows you to use C Sharp, but then you can build the app for Android and iOS at the same time with the same code base. Xamarin has now been replaced by, I think it's .NET Maui, which I've never used before. Um, Xamarin was great though, man. And I love C Sharp as a language. It's a, strong, a strongly typed language, powerful language, uh, easy to code in, easy to debug. Um, and here's the app code. Um, this is like a page here. Basically, you, you can set up your page and you can actually code the labels and code the different UI components of the page. I won't go into super detail, but this is C-sharp code. You can uh, make this really, you know, use the principles of OOP. Um, it's really, just really made the app really organized to build. Um, should I continue building in this? That's one thing is my thought is maybe to adopt the .NET MAUI, uh, but I'm not sure. I've been using React Native a lot more lately, which I love because it's JavaScript and that's what I've been working with uh, more lately in my career. Uh, it just makes it really easy to build apps. I think the trade-off is that when there are updates to React Native, it can be a little bit hairy trying to update to the latest version of React Native within your app. You have like a lot of stuff you have to do sometimes, but there's not a lot of overhead for like uh, platform specific issues like I had with Xamarin. Like Xamarin, when it was like platform specific stuff, I had to really 
code for each specific platform and like solve bugs on each one. But with Xamarin, I mean with React Native, it's pretty clear like when you code it one time, you're gonna just have to code it one time for the most part, which was pretty cool to see with React. And you can just build really fast in React uh, for, to me a little bit faster than Xamarin. But Xamarin Forms was great as well. Like I'm not pitting them against each other. They both were great. But I think I'm gonna go with React Native going forward for this one so I can have cons com some consistency with the, um, with the other things that I've been programming lately. On the back end, I just simply had PHP endpoints. So if you know what PHP is, it's server-side rendered pages. And I just had endpoints on each, you know, per, I guess, you know, server rendered page. You can also just have endpoints. And so this was my web API or web service that simply like for example here this simply just gets snippets from the database um using my sql as the database i just write queries you know a call will come from the app would say you know who the user is what the parent id page is and just get that snippet from the database and return it in a loop back all the child snippets back to the parent to the app and then the app would display it so it's pretty simple. I can go through all the other pages, but this is pretty pretty simple how it was. I like how quickly in PHP you can build endpoints out. And that's why I used it a lot in the past and I still use it to take to this day. Um I do notice like some speed issues sometimes with with PHP and I'm not sure if it's the database connect connection or if there's some things I can do to optimize it. But I did notice when I build apps in Node that they they seem to be a little bit snappier, the requests come back a little faster. Um, so I don't know, I might switch to Node and here's the pay homepage for Node, like it's JavaScript and that kind of helped me with consistency between JavaScript, I may be able to share libraries with the app. Um, but yeah, I might just switch to using Node. I've used it before for, for web API and there I would just hook up, you know, either the same MySQL database or I may switch to like a MongoDB database. Um, I don't know. I think I might stick with the same database and just use Node and just simply make the same calls from the app to get the data. Um, and if you know how like our app architecture typically is, you have your app that you built and then you have like a web API, which is like, kind of like a middleman that takes requests from the app and figures out what to do with them. And then it either makes a call to the database to store some data or pull some data out of the database and then returns that data to the app. And it's kind of like the business logic that can sit there um, as a middleman so that the app just doesn't do have direct access to the database. Uh, you kind of need that middleman there, you know, for scaling issues, for rate limiting, for protection of your database, um, for adding business logic that you don't want to have sitting in the app. You know, you, you have to have a separation of concern sometimes between your database and your app. There's a lot of reasons for having that layer in between um, uh, that I won't go into right now. And here's my MySQL database, uh, just three tables. I just have the purchases when people purchase the full pro version, all the snippets, and then they have parent ID. So if there's like snub, sub snippets, and then I have all the users. One complaint I got is like, why does this app need users? And they're absolutely right. So I'll probably get rid of the users concept. Um, that really was to kind of tie to the purchases, but at the same time, I think I can do something different, you know, have some kind of key user or something where I can, um, or tie into Apple and Android's payment system to keep track of who the person is versus trying to, you know, have a user sign up. So that's basically it. I'm gonna have to redo this app. Downloads have started to slow down. Um, I do think it needs to refresh. I wanna rebuild it. Some of the features I wanna add are like a widget on the home screen where you can see your snippets and copy them from there. Maybe like a, a keyboard widget where you can copy the snippets from there so you can kind of, while you're typing, you can click over to the snippets and grab a snippet out of there instead of typing it up. Uh, and I would just wanna kind of do a visual overhaul make the text a little bit bigger. You know, let me know what ideas y'all have for making this app better. Maybe go check it out on the Apple App Store. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate you watching. Uh, and I'll make more videos just about the progress of how this project goes.